Hello everyone and welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. This week we are continuing our discussion about youth. We've invited area youth pastors to discuss some of the challenges well, as well as great happenings in our day with young people. And I'd like you to meet this panel right now. First, we have Laura Tubman, who is the next generation pastor at New Life Church International. Next, Marty Wren, youth pastor at Ross Culp Church of Christ. Third, Brandon Green, former youth pastor and current lead pastor at Calvary Chapel of Praise, now known as Celebration Church. And rounding up our panel is Josh Kennedy, Director of Student Ministries at Shawnee Alliance Church. Welcome all of you to our program today. Hello. Happy good to have you. Here. Good, good. Let's begin our discussion um, by talking about some of the challenges that young people are facing today that are causing them to leave the church. There's been a study by a group um, called Brenna, a poll that shows that 13% of teens aged 13 to 18 identify as atheists compared to only 6% of adults overall. Yeah, I just wonder, how can that be? You, you would think that'd be the other way around, that maybe it would be more adults that were thinking along those lines than young people. But it just, just shows you how impressionable Mm -hmm. their minds are. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have to say? What, what, what do you think is causing that? Any idea? Why, wh what's trending in this country that is making for more atheistic views among such young impressionable mm -hmm. minds? Um, you know, another, another part of that study, I should bring this in to add to the conversation. In that survey, it showed that the biggest struggle that church leaders have today is undoing what the world is teaching to our youth. That's part and parcel to what I mentioned earlier. So if this is all true, how do we combat this? How do we face this? How do we arm ourselves? Well, I, I think that as um, leaders, uh, we've done somewhat of a disservice in the entertainment aspect um, and even dumbing down the truth uh, to our students because we thought, you know, they can't handle it. And, you know, when they get older, then we'll, we'll really talk to them and make them feel part, you know, of the church when they come to adult church. We kind of took a different approach. We wanted them to belong and have a sense of, they're, you're part of the church now. Um, and so we allow them to serve. Um, we want them to feel like their contribution is valuable. So I kind of think that, that that's helpful in the fact that we're not just keeping them at the kids' table uh, because we are living at precarious times. Mm -hmm. And these times are difficult. And we've got some big questions asked by these students that are smart, you know? And so it's really important to reach them and create an atmosphere of acceptance so that their questions can be heard and validated. But I love the Word of God. And I love that Jesus, you know, he said, he made this prayer, Lord, sanctify them with your word. Your word is truth. And what brings them apart during this, uh, this season where we feel like the culture is so strong and so influential is them to understand we're living as believers as a counterculture and if we are set apart, then we've got a different set of standards and we've got a, a different set of belief systems that it's important for them to understand that and that we can validate some of the things that they've been wondering about. But just don't treat them as if, well, you know, um, we'll tell you when you're older kind of thing. You like know? A second rate Christian. Yeah. yeah. What was that again? Like, like a second rate Christian, mm -hmm. you know, like when it's your turn to bat, sure. so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also think that, you know, as far as, you know, this percentage of students, you know, 13 to 18 years old, I mean, there's a lot of great things that technology brings, but, you know, it makes you wonder, okay, like there's so much more. If they've got a question about something, they're going to Google it, they're going to sure. YouTube it. Yep. And so they want to be able to see firsthand so much more than what maybe even what we did, what our parents did, yeah. um, you know, so, you know, they want to be able to see it with their own eyes, but you know, we're called by faith, you know, to be a part of this. And so, you know, it's being able to, going off what you said, you know, instilling faith in them and what the concept of faith is, right. you know, having them fully understand, you know, the, the, the whole idea of Jesus Christ that we've got to believe in it and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
I think when we look at these numbers and we can go, how, how did this happen? <coughs> if we look at today's culture, look as simple as like making a coffee order. If you're like, hi, I want a 16 ounce latte, skim, no whip, you know, half calf, blah, blah, blah. You get to pick and choose. And it's really a pick and choose kind of culture and a pick and choose sure. day and age. Mm -hmm. So you have people that are not wanting to identify solely with, I am a Bible believing Christian. You know, but they're going, well, but I want the faith and hope, but I don't want to have to deal with this or I don't want to deal with the persecution aspect. So that's where I think when we get to these numbers, it's where people will pick and choose. OK, I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but I don't want to identify as anything solely because I, I don't want to have to be held accountable to it or held down to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's a lot of where we're seeing that. Um, and that's where, you know, like Pastor Brandon was saying, we have to be willing to teach scripture and it has to be founded in the word yeah. really is where it comes down to and um i know you know as a kid i was that one that was always like well why 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 and i think sometimes in the church when <clears throat> students will ask well why do you say don't date until this why do you say you know stay pure until marriage why do you say sure. you know don't do this or do that um a lot of times we'll say well just because well because i said so right. because the bible said so or even if it's a harder question that we don't know the answer to, right. you know, maybe we've fallen into the trap of saying, oh, we'll just pray or, or just have faith. But the thing is, we're in the information age, like, like I think Josh yeah. was saying, where they've got information at their fingertips. They're constantly digging for information. So that's where have faith and pray, while there is validity in that, may not be enough to address their actual question. Growing up, you know, when I wanted to know something, I had to go to the Encyclopedia Britannica, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas today, you know, with their phones, at three seconds, Google's giving you an answer, but yeah. where is it coming from? Yeah. We're inundated with information, but mm -hmm. we're starving for revelation. Yeah. And that really has to come from a culture of just um, instructing the Word of God and um, being in a church that's life-giving, being in a youth ministry that's life-giving, that's experiencing the presence of God, because there's some things that our, our minds just, you know, uh, it, it's just not enough of the information that we receive. We need an actual encounter with the living yes. God, with His presence. And so that's really important too, that is the atmosphere of your home, you know, filled with just you know, analytical you know, ideas and thoughts, or do you experience presence when you pray with your with your child uh, when you're reading the word of god you know i, I think those are really important mm -hmm. and i think an even bigger part when you're talking about you know kids aren't you know what was the statistic where more t students are atheists than adults i think it's a lot about perception you know people are you know with social media it's easier to get to know more people and the church i think just has a bad reputation among young people as you know, we are solid in our belief. This is how it's supposed to be. And if you don't follow this, then you don't belong here. Yeah. Whereas students, you know, there's a lot of questions about you know, their sexuality, their mm -hmm. relationships, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol, drugs, and our culture is evolving in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to keep up with the culture, but at the same time being scripturally obedient yeah. mm -hmm. and finding that balance. I'm, I'm reminded of a form of evangelism that I learned in college called Celtic evangelism, where instead of people having to change how they are to mm -hmm. come to church, the Celts would go to their village, get to know them, get you know, build that relationship with them, and then introduce the gospel. I think a lot of young people have this perception in their mind that in order to go to church you have to follow these specific rules and they're not willing to follow those specific rules when in reality That's it's right. more about a relationship mm -hmm. instead of you know the bible says don't do this don't do this don't do this don't do this do do these things right. it's not about a to-do list it's about a relationship right. and somewhere along the line the church has lost that yeah. that's absolutely true because if you think about <clears throat> jesus example of who he hung out with you exactly. know all these precarious yeah. individuals with uh, marred past and you know, they were shady at best. And Jesus always created an atmosphere where people belonged first before they believed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so friendship evangelism, which you're, which yep. you're talking about, is mm -hmm. so crucial uh, to reaching your student, whether in a student, as a student leader or as you know, a parent, is just creating that atmosphere where your child feels safe, they feel accepted. And I, I firmly believe that if your child knows that they belong first, or if your student knows they belong first, then it creates an opportunity for them to believe. And then when they believe, they can become. 
So if you start out with, you know, you're not beneficial to me yet. And so, you know, you grow up and you believe and you start doing. We live in a society where our value is determined on what we do. And what the father has always projected is you're valuable because who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our, our students are just on the inside. They're so filled with depression and anxiety because they don't really understand that, mm -hmm. that it's the prodigal son that, you know, mm -hmm. they, all they can see is their sin before them, their failures, the past. Mm -hmm. And here we've got the father and his, his heart towards them is, is just filled with compassion towards them. You are accepted first before you believe, mm -hmm. before you have it together, yeah. before you're polished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like Romans 5, 8 says that while we were still sinners, Christ, Christ died, died for yeah. us. Yeah. It's like he didn't wait for you to get cleaned up. He didn't wait That's for you right. to follow his rules. He died for you when you were still messed up. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot that goes along with what you were saying, you know, as far as the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, because I get a lot of students that, you know, they think that faith has got a lot of rules to it. If I wanted to teach you how to play baseball, you know, and you'd have no idea how to do it, I'm not going to go through and let, teach you all the rules about right. everything mm -hmm. first, right? I, we're gonna we're gonna show you the joys of how to play baseball right. and things like that. Excellent. Good example. So I want to show you about what it's like to have a relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus because that's the you know that's the win you know and yes. yeah there's a couple rules you know obviously that come along with it but like you know what what angle are we going at them with is right. it about you know well you got to live a life that's like this or right. man do you know how much Jesus loves you that's right yeah you know? right. Yes. what you win them with is what you win them to if you're going to try to mm -hmm. use rules well then that's the person that you're going to create as far as a disciple it's going to be a very legalistic disciple that right. you know unless you follow these rules then you're, you can't be a Christian. There's Whereas no if you it. if you point them, you know, this is how much God loves you. This is what Jesus did for you on the cross. You know, this is who He wants you to yes. be. Mm -hmm. A lot more relatable. He'll that person will feel a lot more loved. And it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Right. You know, the Greek word is metanoia. It's a changed mind. If you want to mm -hmm. see changed behavior, just begin to focus on the goodness of the Father, mm -hmm. and it creates a space where they can begin to change what they're doing. They're going to want to do better. They're, they're going to want to live differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think we'll take a break here. You know, um, questions that we receive from you are the ones that very often we're asking our panel every week. And we're going to take a break and you'll get to know how you can send us your questions so that they can be answered right here on this program. We'll be right back. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back, and, and we're, we're discussing here during the break, uh, how do you explain the do's and don'ts in a way that doesn't turn young people off, but to let them know that there are consequences for many of the things that you do that you really shouldn't do. For instance, James talks about the fact that he says that um, first a thought is conceived in the mind, yes. and then it leads to the sin. That's mm -hmm. the act. And when it is finished, it leads to death. That's the consequence. Yes. So how, how do we explain to young people that some consequences go on a long time? The old saying, boy meets girl, they fall in love. Pretty soon, they fall in bed. They go to the altar and get saved, but the girl is still pregnant because yeah. the consequences go on. Right. How, how do we make that plain to them? The way that I try to do it is take, take the Ten Commandments, for example. You, know, yeah. you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not envy, you know, don't take the Lord's name in vain. I'll, I'll try to paint it in a way that, like, you know, how many people do you know that are living their best life because they stole something? Mm -hmm. How many people are thriving because they're such good liars? You know, mm -hmm. you don't live a good life by doing these things. There's a reason God told you not to do them. It's not to ruin your fun. It's so that you would live a good life here on this earth. You know, in talking about, you know, premarital sex and the pregnancy, mm -hmm. you know, there, those boundaries were created in Genesis 1 and 2 so that all the things that go along with a premarital 
or premarital pregnancy and having a child when you're too young or perhaps not ready or whatever the case may be doesn't happen you know rules are made to provide and protect a person mm -hmm. they aren't made to ruin our fun yeah and god you know didn't say to not have premarital sex because he's like look I just don't want them to have fun right now. Right. You know, they can't enjoy right. this, yeah. you know, but I think statistics show about having, you know, a child prior to uh, being married that the relationships aren't as, you know, sustainable. Yeah. And so it's all a part of a plan and a purpose, like you said, to protect, you know, because of, you know, that uh, if you've got a marriage, uh, you know, especially one that's backed by um, a foundation of faith with God, you know, that that's going to flourish and, you know, the idea that that relationship would stay together, so. Right. But look at what happened in the garden. You had prohibition there because God told Adam and Eve, you can eat of all, you can eat of all the trees in the garden except the one there in the middle. Yeah. What tree did they gravitate to? Yeah. Human nature. Yeah. Human nature. Yeah. Human nature yeah. All we like sheep have gone astray, yeah. each one mm -hmm. turning in their own way. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I, a lot of people struggle with if God was good, why is there so much pain in the world and mm -hmm. struggle in the world? It's because at the end of the day, God didn't want puppets. Right. He didn't want robots. Yeah. He gave us the greatest gift, which is uh, our own volition, yeah, choice. Well. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, God is not a controller. Um, God wants, God is love. He just doesn't have love. And in order for it to be real love, it has to be reciprocated. And so if there was no choice in the matter, then God would be abusive. Mm -hmm. but he's not abusive. Right. He gives us opportunity. Man mm -hmm. willfully chose the wrong way, but God still continued to pursue them. So all of these things that come, especially like in Song of Solomon, it, it were advised, don't awaken love too soon right. <laughs> you know, before you're ready for the yeah. long range consequences. Yep. All of those are in placement because God is love and love <clears throat> Does it has to have choice, or if it doesn't have a choice, it's abuse. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, when people ask that question, you know, why does God allow evil to exist in the world? I, I don't think they're giving enough credit to, you know, mankind for the choices that we make, or to right. Satan for how smart he is, because mm -hmm. he, you know, in the garden, he took a perfect situation, a perfect environment where yes. Adam and Eve had yeah. everything that they had yes. to produce a perfect outcome. And a perfect world. A perfect world, yeah. and they messed it up. Yeah. You know. I think the thing is, a lot of times um, we forget that every person is tempted by something. Sure. Now, right. we, we don't get to choose. Like, Josh doesn't get to choose what he's tempted by. Marty doesn't get to be temp choose what he's tempted by. But both of them as individuals choose how they respond yeah. to yeah. that temptation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, that's where it really comes down to, okay, we aren't charged for the things that we're tempted with, but simply our right. response. And our response comes with consequences, whether they be positive or negative. Right. It's not a sin to be tempted. No, no it's not. Christ yeah. himself was, was uh, absolutely exactly. was the way he Correct. responded. To but the, you know how the way the enemy works is, you know, you had that thought. Yeah, and so he's already making you feel that you're the originator of that thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's where a good instruction comes from. I also feel like as as parents, uh, you know, you have to create an atmosphere where your child trusts you and your relationship. So the advice that you give, they can trust it because mm -hmm. you haven't led them wrong, you know. Uh, they, they're following your example because you're living it, you're leading it at, by example. Mm -hmm. You're not just lip service. I think that's really important too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, let, let, let's take a look at this now. Um, in the area of um, sexual identity, goodness, this is, a, this, is a, this is a very important topic here. You have the one camp that says, listen, it's very simple. You look at yourself in the lower part of your body, if you have equipment, you know you're a man. Mm -hmm. If you don't have equipment, you know you're a woman. It's just that simple. And on the other side, we've got people that are questioning what their identity is, or they just don't know what their identity is. They have a birth certificate that tells them, but they're not, they're not adhering to that. Is this a social disorder, or is this something that is satanic, demonic? How, how do you respond to this to give young people a good answer and direction for their lives? The enemy cannot create, he can only pervert. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you know, I just had to fill out an application online and I was really surprised by this company that it, it actually had the, the place to choose non-binary. And, you know, we didn't have that 10 years ago, not Ooh. even five years ago. Yeah. But it's really important to stress to our, our students because how the enemy works is in, in the battlefield is ultimately the mind. Yes, it is. And the influence that we subject ourselves to. So we can either be governed by our feelings or governed by our faith. And so it's really important to, um, to reiterate to them that inclination does not mean definition. It, you may be inclined or prone to certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be tempted in that way, but it does not have to define you. It's, it's mm -hmm. choosing what is going to define you. Is mm -hmm. it going to come from the Word of God? And then you're going to have to continue to choose what the Word of God says about you and making that aware to your child that, that may be struggling because we see more students coming to um, almost a boldness to say, I identify as this or, you know, I'm fluid things of that nature. We didn't have those conversations 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to have the conversation and to stress what the word of God says and to declare I am who he says that yeah. I am. Yeah. In the middle of your statement, I think you said something that is just key. It's something to focus on that we may have an inclination or a temptation to be something else. Right. But that's where the choice comes in and you sure. have to recognize yeah. the way God has made you. Is right. that what I hear you say? Yes, absolutely. It's, it doesn't have to be my definition. You may have in your, uh, you know, in your history, uh, you know, a lot of people that, you know, had trouble with alcohol. Well, don't start labeling yourself an alcoholic. <laughs> Just because it's in the family absolutely. line. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Because it does not have to be your definition. Yeah. I mean, all of us have the opportunity through the power of the Word of God and understanding our potential in Jesus Christ that behold, the new has come. Mm -hmm. We are a new creation. We don't have to go and live by our feelings. And I think that's really, we're such an emotional culture today. Mm -hmm. Emotions are on 10. And so when you're dealing with emotional people and especially students that are dealing with depression, anxiety, and all of these things that are real in their life, uh, they've got to realize that, you know, you have to be led by what you know from the Word of God. You can't be led by your feelings. Or it will lead you to a path that you don't want to go. Mm -hmm. It's a broken path. Yeah. You know, the, the thing that puts many Christians in a squeeze is that they are being called bigoted uh, because of their, their stand sure. against this sexual identity issue that we're dealing with today. When in fact, I think perhaps a part of the definition needs to be say that you love the person, mm -hmm. but you're rejecting the particular lifestyle right. that they're talking about because it's, not, it's against God's word. It, yeah. and, and there's about that much difference between the two as far as some people are concerned. Getting that across to many of our young people, I, I love you. You have this special sin, this identity thing you're dealing with. I love you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't accept what you have chosen to choose, uh, what you've chosen for your lifestyle, mm -hmm. but I, 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 uh, I love you. And making them know that they are genuinely loved. Yes. Does that make any sense at all? Absolutely. Yeah, but I think the problem, I totally agree with that, but the problem is that some people feel like, you know, well, love means that you accept me for who I am. Yeah, that, that, that's and, the comeback. And that's the, that's the hard part. It's like, you say you love me, but you don't endorse my life. It's uh -huh. like, you know, well, what is your definition of love? Is it acceptance? To me, a definition of love is, you know, wanting the best for someone else. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when we, consider scripture in this, the best for everybody is to know Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's the mm -hmm. ultimate purpose for why I believe we're here. You yes. know, wh when you're talking to somebody who is in a sin that is, that is living counter to what the Bible says, like, I love you, that's why I want this for you. Because scripture says that if you know Jesus, then he'll give you peace, he'll give you knowledge, he'll give you wisdom, he'll give you understanding, and, and ultimately he'll give you eternal life mm -hmm. with him in heaven forever. You know, and so, you're dealing with people that are living in sin, you got to make that very clear to them is what does, you know, what are the different definitions of love that people use? Because mm -hmm. some people it's just a feeling, it's an emotion that, you know, comes and goes mm -hmm. as, as much as anything, you know, like the wind does. But when God talks of love, it's permanent, it's forever, it's unconditional. Mm -hmm. But He loves us so that He can make us something new. Uh, I forget which book it is, but C.S. Lewis writes in one of his books that God 
you know, when, when we accept Jesus into our life, we think, oh, maybe, you know, he says, picture yourself as a house. Like, well, maybe he'll, he'll clean up the living room or he'll make the kitchen nice and sparkly clean. <coughs> he'll make the bathroom look great. Well, in reality, what Jesus is wanting to do is he's going to add a whole other wing over here. He's going to do things that hurt you because he's making you into a ma- mansion that he is going to live in himself. Mm-hmm. And it's all about, you know, communicating <coughs> that and showing them that, you know, just because I love you, it doesn't mean necessarily what you think it means, but it might mean something better than what you ever imagined. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, um, I have a student, and I'm I'm so proud of him. And um, you know, he he had been asking a lot of questions and really been battling through a lot of things um, spiritually on his own, in his own relationship with God. And someone had made a comment to him um, who was caught up in that type of a lifestyle, mm-hmm. and said, "Well." I'm going to hell anyway because of the decisions I've made. There's no hope for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of my student because his comeback was, well, didn't you hear about Paul in the Bible? He was killing Christians. Mm -hmm. And God used him to write a large portion of the Bible and to bring many people to Christ. So if you would just give him 10 minutes of your day, there's no... There's no saying what God could do to completely change you. Sure. So, I mean, I think when we see those things, these are symptoms of hurts that are going on on the yeah. inside. <clears throat> yeah. um, you know, and, and this is something that unfortunately has hit my family personally, uh, you know, where it, it came out of hurt and past burdens and, and abuse and such and so forth yeah. um, to where they th- this person thought, okay, well, this will make this feel better. Mm-hmm. This will, you know, negate everything that happened to me before. And it, it's, it's a desired treatment plan. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's only treating a symptom. It's not actually treating the root. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that root is that identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. That's mm-hmm. very interesting. Very interesting. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, there's something in my throat. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> well, that's our program for today. And we want to thank you for being with us. We'd love to hear from you to know how you feel about our discussion today. And, and also, any questions that you might have, be sure you write them down and send them to us. Again, thank you for being with us. And until next week, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.